Hey everyone, Chuck here. Um, in this video, it's kind of a two-parter. We're going to combine into one here. The overall topic is reviewing strategic buffers. And when we look at the two subtopics, they're so closely tied together, might as well capture them both. And the first one is identify bottlenecks, capacity constrained resources, supply chain risks. And then the second part is to evaluate the types, the sizes, and locations of buffers based on lead times, inventory, capacity, et cetera. So let's jump over to the whiteboard. I'm gonna share the screen here, okay? So let's talk about what a bottleneck is here. And this comes out of the book, you know, well, it's been around for a while, certainly, um, but it's most widely known based on the um, book, The Goal and the Theory of Constraints. So let's say we've got a five station work center. A can work at 10 per hour. I can do 10 pieces per hour. B can do eight. C does 14. D does 12. E does 16. Let's just say the market can do 30 per hour or accept 30 per hour based on our market share. So a bottleneck, if you think about it, is the slowest spot, slowest step in the process, which in our case is B. I can only do eight per hour. A can do 10 an hour, but only eight is getting through because that's the rate for B. So that's the bottleneck. Um, the capacity constrained resource is really kind of the next bottleneck, which would be typically A because um, once we break B as a bottleneck, and what I mean by break is let's say we improve it up to 18 per hour. Maybe we add a second machine and do some improvements then all of a sudden the bottleneck switches to A. So the capacity constrained resource is kind of the next bottleneck up, but we're also concerned about the capacity constrained resource because we don't manage it properly, at, you know, which is kind of a secondary potential constraint, then we could have bottlenecks there. So, you know, we're trying to improve B and move around the bottleneck and continue to improve and break the bottleneck until at some point the marketplace probably becomes the bottleneck, which means we can make it faster than the, than the marketplace can take it, which means at that point, we'll probably go ahead and start reducing lead times to the customer, get some more business, bring the bottleneck back inside. Um, we're also worried about supply chain risk because what happens if B goes down? Then we may want to put some inventory in front of it or after it to keep going or other places in the process. So we need to make sure that we stay on top of our bottlenecks and managing around the bottleneck and any other risks because we can only meet the marketplace needs at the rate of the bottleneck. And so ultimately um, it's whether or not we can meet the supply needs of the customer. So bottleneck kind of reigns supreme in a way you could argue. Now the second part of the conversation you know, what are the types, the sizes, the locations of the buffers? Um, theory of constraints argues we should put buffers in front of the bottlenecks, as well as any places where we can leverage flexibility and be able to respond quickly to issues regarding lead time, inventory, and capacity. And so it's argued that if we do that, it puts us in a position of maximizing our ability to respond to demand volatility. And, and being able to do that means we have the ability to compete operate successfully, meet the needs of the customers, do it profitably. So really kind of works hand in hand between lead time, inventory capacity, understanding where the bottleneck is, gearing things and working through and around maximizing the bottleneck and improving the bottleneck. And um, so we can continue to ship more and more to the customer.